Hello, my name is RD and we are going to solve problem 6.28 from Sidra and Smith book. So the question is fine. I1, I1 is the current here and then V2 here. Okay, let's start. Maybe we will start by finding I1 first. Why? Because we know that this is 0 0.7 volt and this one here is 0 0.7 volt. So we know the voltage difference between this node and this node. And we have a resistor between them, so we can simply using Ohm's law, right? We can simply using Ohm's law and the voltage difference divided by the resistance is just the current. So I will have I1 is equal to 10.7 minus 0.7 divided by 10k so I will have 10 volt divided by 10k which result in 1 mini ampere okay that's I1 so let's put, take a note here so I will have this as 1 mini ampere okay now we need to find V2 here. Okay, V2 is a little bit tricky because we don't know the current that passed through here. So let's name this as IC. And then this one here is actually IE because this is the emitter. This is the collector. And this is the base. Remember, when we have a BGT, we will have IC is equal to beta times IB. And IB will be IC divided by beta. This is when the transistor is active. But here we have an information that beta is very large. So we will have the current that goes from base will be uh, roughly zero. Why? Because this beta is very large, or just assume it infinity, so I will have that will equal to zero. So the current that goes here will be zero milliampere. And when active, we know that KCL can be applied in the PCT. So assuming that the BGT is active, Maybe we can do KCL. KCL at the transistor here. Here we have the current that goes in is equal to the current that goes out. So I will have I1 is equal to the current that goes out. This one, but that is zero. So I don't need to write it. And here I will have IC. But guess what? I1 is 1 milliampere. So I will have 1 milliampere here. And if I have 1 milliampere here, what does the implication? We can use again Ohm's law to calculate V2. How? Let's do Ohm's law. Ohm's law. So I will have V2 here minus minus 7, so I will have plus 10.7 divided by the resistance, which is 10K, is equal to 1 milliampere. Or this will cancel out into 10 volt, right? So I'll have 10 volt here. And I will have V2 there is minus 0 0.74. Okay, so based on our calculation, this V2 should be minus 0 0.74. Now, the thing that we need to do is to check that our assumption is correct. We know that the Voltage here 
emitter is larger than in the collector so the transistor will be active at this point nothing wrong with our assumption so in conclusion we will have i1 here is equal to 1 milliampere and then v2 is equal to minus 0 0.7 volt so this is the answer and hopefully i did not make any mistakes in the calculation see you in the next video bye bye